Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to return to a brewery that you've seen me review a good number of things from. Now, this must be video number 10 or so involving this brewery, but they're one of my local breweries here in Osaka and in recent times they've been doing a lot of different and new styles and things. So I think it's quite an interesting time to keep an eye on this brewery, in fact. So for this one then, we are going to return to Mino Beer, who are from Mino, just a little bit to the north of the main city and we're having a taste of their bootleg brute today. So this one comes in at 6% ABV, it's a brute IPA and they've also added sudachi to it which is quite a unique Japanese citrus fruit but it's also a collaboration with Hibino Beer who are a craft beer bar from Sakai City which is to the south of the main kind of central part of Osaka City. So really looking forward to trying this one. I did actually try a brute beer when I was filming my out and about video up at Mino Warehouse. I can't remember, I did try a Red Brut beer, but I can't remember if I tried this one as well. So it might be that I've already done a kind of little review of this one for you before. But regardless, I'm looking forward to uh, to trying this one for you and doing a little bit more of an in-depth tasting. And like I say, um, this is one of the first Brut beers that these guys have done. It's quite an interesting time. Um, to be following Mino Beer just now because they're putting out a lot of different styles and really interesting quirky beers. For example, the Mugen Stout that I reviewed for you a few videos back, the collaboration with um, Taihu Beer from Taipei in Taiwan. So yeah, really curious to try this one. Cool to see them having a go at a Brute IPA, a style that has not been all that popular or all that kind of produced in Japan I guess you should say so hopefully this is a good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well I will probably need to go down and have a visit to Hibino beer at some point as well but um, yeah let's get on with the review then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Mino beer before there's about 10 or so of them down there and no doubt there will be some more at some point in the near future there's all the usual social media in there as well if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the japanese beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Mino Beer then, on to my brewery notes. So Mino Beer, as I've told you before, are from Mino to the north of Osaka, about 15 kilometres to the north of the main city. And this area of Osaka is very famous for the Meiji no Mori uh, Mino Quasi National Park, which is one of the oldest ones in Japan. And it's also famous as well for the Katsuoji Buddhist Temple which is over 1200 years old uh, and it's just a very beautiful part of the city actually you've got the lovely mountains up there you've got the waterfall that you can walk to as well and they've also got the infamous monkey population as well you can see the monkey here on uh, my Mino glass and you'll also see them on the bottle cap there as well and this is used as a symbol of the brewery basically just to kind of uh, symbolize the fact that they are from Mino actually so yeah and as I've told you before when it comes to Buddhism and Shinto and things like that the types that you have in Japan it's all about respecting nature and taking uh, wisdom from the ancestors and things so it's not uh, it's not unsurprising that they like to use a kind of nature based symbol for their brewery and um, but the Mino brewery itself was established back in 1996 and it's owned by the Oshita family who'd run an alcohol shop for around 30 years before they opened the brewery. But apparently the family went for dinner one night and uh, on the way home, Papa Oshita just uh, pointed to a building and said, oh, we're going to be brewing beer in there soon. And uh, he was basically going to train his daughters up to do it. And now uh, Masaji Oshita is considered the kind of uh, the godfather, if you like, of Japanese craft brewing. But it turned out that he'd bought a brew kit from New Zealand and he'd rented out the building and they were ready to go. So the brewery is now run by the family's three daughters. Kaori and Mayuku founded the brewery and then the younger sister has joined them a little bit later on. But Kaori is the elder 
eldest sister and she's also the head brewer and she trained initially at a brewery in Kobe before going to the National Research Institute of Brewing, the RNIB in East Hiroshima. But she says that she actually learned a lot on the job, she's constantly tweaking her recipes as well and she also credits Nakanishi of Isakadoya as being a great mentor to her. Um, but the brewery apparently had a very a kind of uphill struggle when they first started because many of these little Jibiru breweries that started in the kind of uh, mid 90s if you like a lot of them just kind of died off because the quality of the beer wasn't that great and um, you know it, it all came about after Japan liberalized their tax laws in the mid 90s before 1996 you couldn't have a brewery that uh, was brewing uh, anything less than two million litres of beer per year which as a micro brewer is pretty much impossible to start off from so the starting point was way out of their reach um, but the opinion of G Biru at the time wasn't great but Mino have really gone on to be one of the most decorated craft breweries in Japan particularly famed of course for uh, their dark beers the stout and of course the imperial stout as well but these guys now run the brew the 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 Beer Belly pubs in Osaka and they also have the Mino Beer Warehouse which you can find in Mino City which is a really nice little spot actually and you'll see my out and about video that I filmed up there when I was with my dad recently so um, yeah definitely worth going and checking out if you get the chance walk up to the waterfall go and go through the mountains and see the national park and things it really is a very beautiful spot in uh, in Japan you know Osaka is a little bit of a concrete jungle you've got Kyoto and Nara close by which have got some of the lovely temples but if you want a little bit more of a kind of um, natural place then um, Mino is definitely where you want to go. I would really recommend you visit there if you find yourself in Osaka. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Mino Beer for the moment. The parent company is also called AGI Beer Incorporated. They've done a whole host of different beers. I think it's somewhere in the region of like 200 beers that these guys have produced now. So um, yeah, if you want to learn more about these guys, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and untapped pages to see all the different things um, so yeah make sure that you you do that but as I said to you um, this particular beer it's a collaboration with Hibino Beer. I'll try and remember to put the link to their Facebook page in the description below. These guys are a craft beer bar 12 taps at any one time and you'll find these guys in the Sakai Ward which is to the south of the main part of Osaka. It comes in at 6% ABV a brute IPA and it's got um, sudachi added to it. So a few things about sudachi. Um, this is a Japanese sour citrus fruit that's often used in place of lemon or lime for flavouring and cooking. It's not actually normally eaten, um, but it's a speciality of Tokushima Prefecture on Shikoku Island, which is the one kind of a little bit to the, the south of Osaka and just across the water from um, from Hiroshima, not the small island, the quite the bigger one. Shikoku is the smallest, I believe, of the four main home islands of Japan. So um, yeah, somewhere that I do want to go and visit, Kagawa Prefecture, Tokushima, Ehime, and I forget what the uh, what the other one is, but somewhere that I probably will go at some point in the future. We'll do some sake reviews from there, as we always do. So um, yeah, let's have a look at this one then and see how we get on. As I mentioned to you, a 6% Brut IPA. There you can see the lovely label on this one. I actually bought this beer at um, the Mino warehouse. I got it for, I think it was about 650 yen or something like that. Bought it straight from them, so really nicely presented this one. Um, you can see there is the bottle cap on this. It tells you there, there is Hibino Beer Special Collaboration. But yeah, this one was released in December of uh, 2019 and I'm reviewing for it for you just in the very very early stages of January of course. So yeah, without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really curious to see how this beer turns out. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening, so let's get it out and into the glass. There we go. So, quite a nice little pour on that actually. A little bit of sediment left in it, but it should be absolutely fine. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as you can see from the pour, this guy, if I hold it up to the light, it's poured a really dark, almost kind of coppery colour. There's a solid finger and a half of a frothy, I would say very light, creamy, beige coloured head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, quite a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the um, of that head there, but you know, overall, 
it looks pretty nice. This one is a little bit darker in colour for a, a Brute Ale. Normally Brute Ales are kind of blonde, but you know, um, Mino, when I was in the Mino warehouse, they actually had a red Brute Beer, which I thought would be... Um, it was, was really interesting. It turned out to be quite an interesting beer. It was a little bit like a Flanders Red, but a little bit more kind of light, like a Brute IPA. It was a, an interesting beer. But um, yeah, in terms of colour in this one, it definitely looks a little bit more like a West Coast IPA, just because of that darker colour. So a little bit different to what you might get from some uh, some other Brute IPAs. I was going to say some normal Brute IPAs, but you know, can't really say anything about this beer being normal or not. I've not reviewed too many Brute IPAs for you on the channel, but they are a very interesting style, using a very high attenuating yeast normally to give you these kind of champagne, almost champagne like um, flavours, if you like. So, um, yeah, interesting looking beer. So, let's take a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. So, straight away with this one, you can smell that sort of almost Venice quality to it, that little bit of a, you know, Brute IPAs, I've always, it's difficult to describe, they're almost just, a, you can get a little bit of an almost pale malty kind of crackery thing underneath them, and it just has that sort of Venice white wine type quality mixed into it as well, but it's not quite as sharp as you would get from like a white wine sour beer or something like this, or a white wine barrel aged sour, um, you know, it is just a little bit more kind of light and bready, a little bit kind of, there is a little touch of a biscuity sweetness in there, but then you get that sort of vinous, um, slightly acid, almost acidic-y quality to it, which is interesting. But in terms of um, how Brute IPAs go, this one is actually one of the more um, subtle ones, I would say. It's got that quite nice base to it. So, um, yeah, it comes across as being quite light and airy, I would say. Um, yeah, this is... This is really quite nice, I have to say. It's um, it's very, it comes across as being very fresh and very zesty. Um, so it's this is it's a really interesting beer. I mean, straight away with this one, you get that sort of lemon limey thing, which is obviously the sudachi, and you know, to me, it comes across as being a little bit more like a kind of juicy lime if that makes sense. That's how it really comes out to me. It's got a little bit of the sharper zestiness that you expect of uh, lemon, kind of at the front of the nose. And when you're further away from it, I think you'll get that a little bit more. But the aroma is a lot more like uh, like lime rather than anything else. And that kind of mixes in well with the sort of uh, white winey qualities that I was talking about that you're getting from the yeast out of this beer and the yeast and the, yeah, the yeast that's giving you that, the malt base will be giving you the kind of biscuity and sort of light pale malty bready kind of things but um, yeah in terms of how this beer actually um, goes together it's the malt base and the way that the yeast interacts is pretty nice uh, on the hoppy side of things then it's fairly straightforward I mean you've got a little tiny touch of earthiness in there but that's quite minimal you've got some nice kind of floral aromatic notes and you've also got a little bit of a kind of lighter grassy side of thing on the fruity side um, again it's quite lemon limey. I'd be very curious to know what hops they would use in a beer like this. I mean, would they use just a kind of straight up like Haller Tower Titnanger to give you the kind of grassy side of things? And there's something about the hops in this that make me think that. Or would they use something to complement the flavours? For example, Motueka from New Zealand, a nice limey hop, or uh, Equinot from America, Centennial is another one that's got some really nice uh, lemony qualities to it. Would they use something like this? It's a little bit hard to uh, to play to, to guess what hop's going on in this one. I always like playing guess the hops, but with this particular beer, it's a little bit difficult just because of how prominent that Sudachi aroma is in this one. Like I say, more of a, a little bit of the lemony zestiness, but more kind of juicy, if you like, like a lime. Um, but still in its own way, it's very unique. It's almost got a little bit of that kind of minty freshness to it as well, which is interesting. So um, yeah, this is definitely one of the more kind of curious beers that I've come across in terms of aroma from Mino beer. But this is why I was saying it's quite an exciting time to be around this brewery because they are getting that little bit more adventurous, I have to say. So um, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. It comes across as a very lovely, quite fresh and big zesty beer actually. So um, yeah, let's have a go at this one then and see how we go on. This one is the Bootleg Brute 
Um, a 6% brute IPA with uh, sudachi in it, a Japanese uh, citrus fruit from Tokushima Prefecture on Shikoku Island, brewed in collaboration with Hibino Beer, a craft beer uh, bar from Sakai Ward here in Osaka in Japan. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Yeah, this is quite an interesting one. The first thing that comes to mind here, for me, is like, why would you brew this for the winter? Um, because it would be a, this would be a cracking summer beer, you know. And this is one of the things I've always told you when it comes to uh, Japanese beer. You'll always get these beers that are very kind of full flavored, but very light in the body. And um, to me, this is another one that kind of follows that trend. This It really strikes me just as being more of a summer beer and I mean you can't really criticise a brewery for when they're going to release a beer you know it's more about the quality of the beer itself but to me it's just a little bit strange that they wouldn't release something like this um, in the summer rather than the winter but you know schedules and all of that we can make sense of it but this would be a really very nice summer beer actually. But yeah, I like how this goes together. I mean, if you compare this to the likes of the WIPA or the Imperial Stout and things like that, in terms of like being a kind of purist craft beer, if you like, this one isn't quite like that. It's not quite as punchy in its sort of beery qualities, if that makes sense. This is definitely a more of a kind of quirky novelty beer almost. Um, it's almost bordering on the sour beer category a little bit, but um, I think this is a this is a really quite interesting one. I have to say, I do like this, but to me, it just makes more sense as a summer beer rather than a, a winter release. Um, but yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then. So in the middle of your palate, you can feel that nice sort of pale malty, almost crackery quality that blankets the middle of your palate. It does thicken up a little bit and become more smooth and bready the further that you go into the aftertaste, but definitely in the centre of your palate there's a nice, there is a little bit of a, a biscuity note to this one, but it becomes a little bit more kind of crackery, like Jacob's Cream Crackers, it becomes a little bit more like that the further that you move out of the centre of the palate towards um, the edge of the tongue. So in the back corners of the palate you've got a nice um, little bit of earthiness there, a little teeny bit of earthiness, um, but as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue it definitely uh, becomes a little bit more floral and aromatic. Um, like I was saying from the aroma, um, it's difficult to pick out what hops are in this. That carries through into the flavour of this one because the hops are not too prominent in my mind but um, it still comes across as a really quite nice beer. And I like, I like how that, I really like how this one kind of comes together. But round the front curve of the palate you get that nice um, light sort of grassy quality to it. But the thing is when you always add fruit into beer what happens is that it suppresses a little bit of the um, the kind of hoppy side of things and the um, <clears throat> pardon me and the uh, the sort of IBUs and stuff like this and really around that front edge of the tongue you've got the the, the sudachi sitting in this one and um, it really is a little bit more how do we describe this? It's got some of the zestiness that you would expect of lemon, like it has that real freshness that you would expect of lemon. It does have a little bit of the um, the kind of juiciness that you would expect of a lime, but at the same time the flavour is a little bit darker, like grapefruit for example. It really has that almost, I just, I just would call grapefruit being, you know, quite a dark fruit flavour. It's got that kind of almost danky, dark type quality to it. So it's really interesting to have that around the edge of your tongue. It's it's a very curious fruit. I've said the same about some of the yuzu beers. I've had, um, I'm sure it was a yuzu wheat beer. I had one from Baird beer and I did also have one from Mino beer. Um, this one is kind of at the opposite end of the, the yuzu. The yuzu is a very bright fruit. Um, 
and it's but this this one to me is a little bit more of a darker almost sour kind of fruit actually so this one quite often you will find it used in cooking and things I'm trying to remember what I've seen it in because when I saw a picture of it and I saw the little slices of it I recognized it and um, but it's just they're used they're almost they look like limes almost but they're a little bit more kind of um, it's a little bit more of an emerald green than a lime green if that makes sense um, but the flavor in that is just a little bit darker and that really resonates into the aftertaste and the floral qual pardon me the floral qualities really help just uh, just back that up a little bit so I mean this is a beer that is really quite interesting if you like testing your palate with new things this is definitely one that you uh, you want to have a go at so um, yeah interesting stuff but yeah I, I like how this one goes together. It's it is an unusual beer. I kind of inferred earlier that it was more like a sour beer, but it's not. It is more it's more like a fruit beer than anything else, to be honest with you. Um, but that it really does suit it. So behind the front curve of the palate, you've got that nice oily bubble where the kind of juicy fruity esters push their way out of the beer. For me, it is kind of a straight up sort of lemon limey kind of quality that comes out of this one so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of like Centennial or uh, Equinot or Motueka or something like that in here and um, it's definitely got a little bit of that out of it but I don't think this is an overly hopped beer I think it's more the focus on this one is more supposed to be on the uh, the Sudachi fruit so that the hoppy presence in this beer is not the biggest that you're going to come across but this is a really nice drinkable and quite crisp ale generally um, you know, it's difficult to describe this one as a, a brute IPA. I would be very curious to try um, a sort of straight up brute IPA from these guys without the uh, the fruit in it. That would be an interesting thing. But, um, you know, I've never, this is apart from the red brute beer that I reviewed for you at the brewery. And um, this is the first one that I've come across from these guys in the brute category. And it's it's an interesting category, one that I do want to explore a little bit more of. But um, in general, I would say that this beer is like, it's kind of more like a fruit uh, beer rather than anything else. A so brute IPA, it's got, yeah, it's got the brute malt base to it in fairness, but it is more like a kind of fruit IPA rather than anything else. But it's not the hoppiest of fruit IPAs that you're going to come across in fairness. But yeah, um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, to me this is quite a light bodied beer, it's kind of at the bottom end of mid bodied, top end of light bodied. Carbonation does have a degree of crispness to this one, um, but at the same time though it has a, a really nice wet mouthfeel to it. One, that's down to the quality of the water you get in Mino off the mountains, and two, generally, it's all about the fact that the Japanese like their beers to be drinkable, and this one, the, the water quality really gives it that kind of crispness like I was saying. So this is another beer that's pretty full-bodied, but, um, well not full-bodied, full-flavoured, I mean, but it's um, it really retains that sort of crispness and drinkability that you'd normally expect of Japanese craft beers. Um, in terms of the bitterness and things like that around the edge of the tongue, I think this beer is only around 30 IBUs, something like that. Maybe not even that, to be honest with you. Um, the malt base is nice and smooth, a little bit of sweetness in there, kind of crackery as I said. Um, not too much presence from the malt base in this one for me, just a kind of subtle underlying there that goes into the aftertaste and you've got some nice kind of sweet fruity um kind of oily fruity qualities out of this one as well to be honest with you but um overall it's a really interesting beer and i'm glad that i was uh, was able to review this one for you so i really hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this one but as i say the one criticism i would have of it is that it is more like a summer beer than a winter beer. It made far more sense to release something like this in the summer, but hey, that's me nitpicking. The main point is that it is a really pretty nice beer and something a little bit more quirky from Mino Beer actually, so definitely worth trying if you get the chance and hopefully they do more brute IPAs and things like that. So um, yeah, definitely an interesting one to review for you, so let's just leave it at that. This one was the Bootleg Brute with Sudachi, a 6% brute IPA from Mino Beer in Mino just to the north of the main city centre of Osaka brewed in collaboration with Hibino Beer, um, a craft beer bar from Sakai Ward in Osaka City. Hopefully I can go down there and have a little look sometime. But a really interesting beer to review this one, mainly because of the Sudachi fruit that's in there. A very 
you know, uh, has a little bit of the lemony zest, as I said, some of the lime juiciness, but also a bit of that kind of darker flavour that you would expect from the grapefruit. But a really kind of um, interesting one to review this. So let's just leave it at that. And this will be my last Mino beer, probably until the summertime. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Until the next time, it's Landry just now. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Mino beer as well. Do let me know if there are any other Sudachi beers out there. That would be a really interesting uh, project to have a look at. If there's any Sudachi sours or wheat beers or anything like that, that would be interesting. But thank you again for watching my reviews. Make sure you check out my social media. Make sure you check out Me No Beer, He Be No Beer as well. And try some Sudachi. It's a very interesting flavour. Slanjo, Skull, Kampai.